Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Burkeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We have a great guest today. I'm very honored. All the way from San Francisco, California, Louisiana native, Baton Rouge native, Tracy Porter, who played for LSU, receiver, all SEC, and all SEC academic all SEC at LSU back in the day. Tracy, thanks for joining us all the way from San Francisco. Well, thanks for having me, Lee. Tracy, uh, you you like myself, you flew in from San Francisco. We'll start with the LSU Alabama game. Um, I know a lot of people in Baton Rouge would like to get your thoughts on the game, um, and we're going to talk about you know your days at LSU and Southern Lab High School back in the day. But what was it like for you to go to? Uh, that Alabama game and LSU getting that big win over Saban? Well, it was pretty exciting. I mean, even before the game started, there was a electricity going around the Hell Club that I you know, participated in, and a lot of people were amped up about the game, had positive thoughts about the game, and so so did I. And so, you know, it was contagious uh, as it relates to the fan and, and fans thinking about, you know, the outcome of the game and, and playing Alabama, which is always a big game. But once the game started, you know, LSU did not make any mistakes on, you know, offense, defense, special teams. And, um, you know, I said, if they can keep it close, then it's be a good uh, potential turnout for LSU. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happened. I mean, there were several lead changes. So obviously that kept, crowd in the game both you know LSU fans and Alabama fans and then of course it came down to overtime and um, LSU pulled off the great you know two-point conversion to win the game so I was pretty excited to see that. What what was it like meeting a lot of your former teammates at the L club I know a lot of people that aren't an LSU grad it's uh, all the lettermen Um, just to let them know is you know all former lettermen of all sports where y'all go eat before the game. But what was it like running into some of your former teammates in Baton Rouge? Well, it was great because, you know, because of the pandemic, you know, the L Club has not been active in the past couple of years. So this year is kind of the first year since, I would say, 2019 that you could get a chance to see some of the past lettermen in various sports Mm -hmm. uh, in the L Club. So it was great, you know, as you know, Shaq was at – was at the game and I got a chance to visit with, you know, people that were played on the, at LSU when I was there, like Lifford Hobley and uh, Ricky Chapman and um, Greg Bowser. And also um, I saw Dalton Hilliard there and um, several other former players, you know, both not just from football, but from all, all various sports. So it was great getting a chance to see folks that I hadn't seen in two or three years. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with more. Tracy Porter, former LSU football player receiver. He was a heck of a receiver back in the day, not only at LSU, but at Southern Lab Kittens High School in Baton Rouge. Man, they've got some history. We're going to talk about that. Me and Tracy will talk about some of the great players that have come out since he went to LSU. A lot of Marcus Spears is the, the big one. There's been many that has come out uh, of Southern Lab High School. We're going to take a break and be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357 357- 7983. That's 357 7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest is Tracy Porter, who was all SEC as a wide receiver at LSU and also academic all SEC. Great student. We're going to talk about that later in the show, what he's doing currently, um, and also uh, a lot of stuff we'll talk about. I want to thank some sponsors John Harvey Toyota. Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, appreciate their support of our show. We want to thank Gross Savon uh, near Lake Charles. Give them a call, the True Sportsman's Paradise, 337-598-2357. And the Bugman, Professional Pest Control in Baton Rouge, 923-2847 or 923-BUGS. Appreciate all their support so we can do this show every, 
every week and three times a week. Uh, Tracy, um, the game itself at LSU and Alabama, before we get into uh, when you played and some of your former teammates, what was it like with the fans? I thought it was one of the loudest games I've been to in a long time. What, what did you think of the loudness and in, in the fans that night? Well, LSU has a, has a national tradition of having – you know, arguably the loudest stadium, collegiate stadium in the country, and and, and it it showed that on Saturday. Um, you know, I um got a chance to to go in the stands for a brief period of time at the game. You know, when I left the L Club um, area where we were sitting, and it was so loud. I mean, I, I couldn't hear the person next to me talking whenever Alabama mm-hmm. had the ball. So, mm-hmm. I'm sure it had to be extremely difficult for the. Alabama team and particularly their offense whenever they came on the field uh, to be able to hear each other and that certainly had an impact in the game and I think Coach Kelly mentioned that during his post-game comments. Uh, Tracy, you played with some great players at LSU uh, during your era and, and and you see the quarterback being from California. Uh, Jaden Daniels was at Arizona State uh, prior. What do you think of watching his development and what Coach Kelly and them have done with him since even Arizona State, where he was a pretty good player, but he looks like he's really uh, starting to, to, to fully get everything, and, and he's starting to look more polished, huh, Tracy? Yeah, I think, I mean, all credit, you know, goes to Coach Kelly and his offensive staff for his development. I, I, I had an opportunity to go to the opening game against Florida State and New Orleans um, because I was in town, and at that particular game, it looked like he would – take a few steps back in the pocket and then take off before the receivers had a chance to come out of their routes. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look at him today, I mean, he certainly takes more time to read the defense, throw the ball downfield, the receivers are open, but if they're not open, he has the capability to take off and run with the ball and which makes him very, very, very dangerous. So hats off to coach Kelly and his offensive staff for the development of Daniels, because I think that is the critical reason why LSU has been able to bounce back from the Tennessee loss and beat um, Mississippi state, you know, beat Florida in Florida, beat Ole Miss, the number six ranked team in the country at the time, and then beat Alabama as well. We're going to take a break again. We're going to bring Tracy back. And uh, when, when we come back, I want to ask uh, Tracy, what do you think of LSU's chances in the playoffs? I think it's pretty good if they went out, uh, and can beat George if they get to Atlanta. Um, I think they're as good as anybody in the country right now. Uh, we'll, I'll ask Tracy. And we're going to talk about what Tracy's doing before the show's over. And also, we're going to talk about Southern Lab and then uh, LSU. I'll ask him some questions about his some memories of, of his playing days at LSU uh, back in the day. Charlie McClendon uh, and, and a lot of the different players, Hokey Gajon and the Jones brothers from Baker and, and just many different players, Jude Hernandez, David Woodley. Um, Steve Ensminger, just a few of his former teammates, and also talk about how he was instrumental helping LSU get one of the greatest receivers in the history of the school, Wendell Davis from Fair Park. We'll be right back. What does a bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest is Tracy Porter, uh, all-SEC receiver from LSU, currently living in San Francisco, California. Um, I want to mention this, that you told me, Tracy, the other day that you're involved with the NFL Alumni Association, uh, chairman of the board. Uh, with uh, You were appointed by Roger Goodell, which I thought was pretty pretty big. Yes, yes. So I, I had an opportunity to meet uh, Roger Goodell at one of the games out here in the Bay Area um, in Santa Clara where the 49ers play. And um, once he found out a little bit about my background, he asked me to send him um, my bio, and I did. And then uh, next thing you know, I was appointed to be on the board for the NFL alumni 
and you know, I think that was 2017. In 2019, uh, I was voted by my peers to chair the board of the NFL alumni. So that's given me exposure to, you know, former players from all colleges around the country and, you know, get a perspective of, hey, here's what my experience was like at LSU, but what was your experience at Michigan, Ohio State, yeah. Alabama, other yeah. colleges around the country. So it's been a, a very good opportunity to interact with players from all over the country. I was wanting to ask you the 1979 game, Tracy, against USC, uh, when USC came to Tiger Stadium. Um, how do you compare the how loud it was for that game compared to the Alabama game the other night? Well, I would have to say the game Saturday against Alabama was a bit louder because obviously in 79, stadium capacity wasn't 103,000 people. Right, right. So, so because there was more people, the, the noise was just more deafening and, um, than it was, you know, back in, in 79. It was still loud, you know, as I talked to, to players from USC on, that was on that team. Uh, Ronnie Lott is a, a, a good friend of mine that lives out here in the Bay Area, and he was on that team, and he certainly shared with me how loud it was and what his teammates were saying in the locker room about playing LSU at the time. But, but obviously the capacity of the stadium wasn't 103,000, so right, I think it was right. even worse for Alabama Saturday versus 79 versus USC. Uh, Tracy Porter is also good friends with uh, former Notre Dame head coach Tyrone Willingham. And uh, you told me you had a chance to become friends through golf uh, with also uh, Senator Rice. Um, who, I mean, this is, I mean, you've met some big time uh, people there in California. And, is, and we're going to talk about what you're doing now, which is incredible uh, in fleet with your company. Um, but but um, before we take a break, I want to ask you about is there a game that sticks out to you, Tracy, when you played for Charlie McClendon that that you always remember and cherish? I mean, was there a particular game or two that, that you always think about? Well, the one you just mentioned, Lee, the USC game was big just because they were obviously highly ranked coming into our, our stadium and we were playing them at home. And as you know, historically, LSU hadn't played Pac-12 or Pac-10 right. schools, I think, at the time. Right. So that that's a big game, but but the other game that, that kind of rings out with me was, you know, the Ole Miss game. I had an opportunity um, that same year. We played Ole Miss in, 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 at Ole Miss and the, to return a punt for a touchdown in a close game against them. And, and then uh, one other game is, is Florida. I have an opportunity to go to, um, to Florida and Gainesville and play them. And at the time, they had a very good receiver named Chris Collinsworth oh, yeah. on that team. And so, you know, we were, I think, the same age. And and I had a, a big game against them, um, against Florida and Florida as well. We'll take a break. When we come back, I want to ask Tracy Porter about Southern Lab High School, his memories of going to high school here in Baton Rouge, going to play for Southern Lab, kittens and – the great tradition they have at Southern Lab. I've been to many of their games, Tracy, and, and they always have great players and great students at Southern Lab High School. We'll be back with more with Tracy Porter, former LSU wide receiver. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest today is Tracy Porter former LSU, all-SEC wide receiver, all-academic uh, student, football player at LSU as well. But, um, Tracy, your days at Southern Lab, being in high school, wh what are some of your memories of being at Southern Lab when you were highly recruited, you know, before you went to LSU? Well, it was um, very good memories of, of, of playing for Southern Lab, um, playing in Baton Rouge uh, when I was – at Southern Lab, we didn't get a chance to play against U High. I think today uh, they may have some of those games, but you know, I, I had a very good experience of playing for Southern Lab. How I got recognized at LSU is 
there was a defensive back named Eric Williams who was a year older than me, and he was getting looks from Division One colleges. And when um, Scooter Purvis came up to the school to look at one of our games, to look at him, that's how I got noticed. I think I had a very good game that particular game. And so, so yeah, it was um, it was a very good experience. Um, you know, I played four sports at, at Southern Lab, football, basketball. Um, I ran track and, and, and played baseball. So it was a very good experience. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, since that time, there's been several other Southern Lab players who have come to LSU yeah. to play football and, you know, other sports as well. Yeah, Todd Davis uh, was, you know, one of the great backs at San Francisco now. You got to like yeah. that. Um, and then, exactly. uh, you know, Damone Clark just got activated with the Cowboys. I'm hoping Damone has a long career with Dallas. And then, obviously, Marcus Spears, Leonard Harris, the late Leonard Harris, uh, Byron Jackson went to Pittsburgh. Uh, was We talked about the, that the other day, Tracy. A lot of people don't realize. I mean, I did because I told you when I was a kid off the air the other day that he holds the national record for interceptions by a high school football player to this day with over 70. You, you knew that. You you were telling me you were you knew that right away. Yeah, he was um he was uh the Randy Moss before Randy Moss because yeah, yeah. you know Baron Baron played receiver and defensive back and um what was notable about Baron is that he was big, he was six two, six three, you know, hundred and ninety pounds and um he could run, he had speed, but you know, what was, was also very impressive is hands. He could his hand was hand was so huge he could palm a basketball with ease, and um, you know whenever he played safety he didn't play cornerback so he kind of played center field. You know whenever the quarterback threw the ball he had the speed to go run run it down and so as you know Lee I mean he he would average two or three interceptions a game which is yeah. almost unheard of. On top of that he would average a touchdown or two a game as a receiver so he was a Kind of a freak athlete, you know, during his time. I want to give you a recruit to keep up with uh, Tracy all the way in California. And it reminded me of, your, you know, Baron Jackson. There's a kid named Javarian Moss from Northwood High School in Shreveport. He's a senior this year, DB. Uh-huh. His second five-interception game this year was last week. Get out. Okay. He run, right. runs a 4-4, 5-11, 180. Very great instincts. Plays receiver. Has over 3,000 yards as a receiver. Has over 30 interceptions, and he only started playing two years ago. Um, and LSU's just starting to recruit him, and I think he's, you know, Baylor's offered him um, a lot of big schools, and I think he's going to be in a Tiger in the end. Um, remember that last name, Moss from Moss. Okay, Shreveport. that's not hard to remember. <laughs> Shreveport, uh, Louisiana, Nor- Northwood High School, not a big okay. school, but yeah, he. I just wanted you to know that because he reminds me a lot of uh, what Byron did and how he did it. I mean, you don't see that very often. Five interceptions in a game. No, you don't. No. That's sort of unheard of. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have final segment with uh, Tracy Porter. I'm going to ask him about, um, you know, what he's doing now, and, and we're going to promote his company. And it, he's been very interesting uh, person that's really been highly successful. You know, not just a football player. He played in the NFL. We're going to mention that too. But um, v- very successful former LSU player. And also we're going to talk about his mom and dad where they went to college. We'll be right back. What does a bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357, and have the time of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest is Tracy Porter, all the way calling us from San Francisco, California, former LSU wide receiver. Uh, Tracy, I want to mention this. You had told me that your mom and dad, both received their master's degrees from Southern University. Um, Correct. You were eighth in your class academically at Southern Lab High School. You were an academic all-conference student at LSU. Uh, academics was always strong, you told me, in, in your family. Yes, it was. Yeah, my um, you know, Because both my parents were 
um, had their master's degrees, you know, they really emphasized that to myself and my brothers that we couldn't do anything, you know, extracurricular wise unless we first took care of our books and, and yeah. being a student. On top of that, my father was a military veteran. So, um, you know, so when he spoke, he spoke with authority <laughs> and um, he, knew he wasn't playing. So, you know, when I signed a letter of intent to go to LSU, he told me I had four years or less mm. and he emphasized or less to get a degree in whatever my field of endeavor might be. So I I ended up choosing the School of Business. And my older brother, who went to Southern on a baseball scholarship, chose engineering. But, um, but you know, that's where I get that from, is, is from them, you know, as part of my DNA, if you will. And, um, you know, I knew I had to come back with a degree, and I knew I had to take care of business first and foremost in the classroom. I want to brag on Tracy a little bit because I talked to Tracy the other day, and he told me he had owned a Mercedes dealership and now fleet management company, San Jose, California, Oakland, all over the country. Uh, 12 years now, y'all, y'all help hospitals, contracts with energy, a uh, lot of big companies. AT&T, you told me. I mean, it's as uh, – Y'all doing really well. Y'all even supply toolboxes uh, for companies on, uh, you know, just retail market companies. I mean, it's, you said it's pretty big, keeps you pretty busy, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I had an opportunity to post my NFL career uh, with Detroit and Indianapolis to um, work for Johnson & Johnson in sales, sales management, and marketing for about 14 years um, before I decided to become an entrepreneur. And I had an opportunity to meet the CEO of Mercedes-Benz USA and got a chance to buy a Mercedes dealership. Um, bought that when it was not performing very well, and when it, that's the reason it was for sale. Mm-hmm. I turned it around along with my team and, and, and then sold it two and a half years later and then started my fleet management company. So as mentioned to you the other day, I mean, I, we have clients all over the country in every time zone of the country where we manage their fleet operations. Um, you know, with all of their vehicles, so to speak. So, yeah, that keeps us busy, um, you know, because we have clients on the East Coast and the central part of the United States and then here on the West Coast. Uh, give out an email, Tracy, that they can contact you. Maybe a former Tiger owns a business. He might want to call you. But is there an email they can email you? Uh, for business? Certainly. The name of my company is called Premier Solutions. And my email address is Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, at Premier Solutions LLC dot com and that's spelled P R E M I E R E S O L U T I O N S L L C dot com. Yeah, call Tracy if you're a former college graduate anywhere, you know, but obviously LSU, you might have some of your former teammates or say, Hey, that's a tiger, give him a call. Um and I want to mention this before we go that and it's very important. I think this is very You know, to my heart, this is big because I've always helped kids get scholarships over the years, and it makes me feel good. But you have served on different boards over the years. You've helped underprivileged kids. Um, You know, kids adopted a middle middle school, high school, uh, after school programs. Uh, Tell everybody about that, Tracy, because I know you've been involved in that for a while too. Yeah, one of the things I do with my spare time is is I'm in an organization that we try to encourage, you know, kids to go to go to college, you know, to further their education. And we adopted a school district here in the Northern California area and specifically worked closely with their after school program. And we work with the middle and high schools in the school district. And most of these kids that are in after school, they have, you know, they have latch key um, families. In other words, they may be single moms or single dads. Yeah. And typically in that household, they don't talk about going to college because they don't think they have the resources mm-hmm. to do so. And so what we do is go and said, hey, it's very critical for you to, to, to do better in life if you get your education. And at one of our sessions that we had with the kids, the president of the University of San Francisco was in the audience and he asked us to bring the kids up to, to their campus. What I found out after the fact was is that USF is one of 28 Jesuit institutions that uh, their mission is to educate first-generation kids. And so through that endeavor, we partnered with the University of San Francisco and exposed these middle school and high school students to college well before it's time for them to go. So it takes away any myth or innuendos about going to college, and we connect them with other kids who are in college who come from a similar background. Yeah. 
And so as a result, we've been very successful in getting these kids, um, showing them a pathway to go to college so that they can better themselves in life. Man, that's great that you do that. I'll tell you the other day, that's that that's to my heart, you know, helping these kids. And we've helped thousands with uh, single moms that have called me, grandparents, to, to help. Give, just give advice, you know, like you said, just anything to let them know you can do it, you know. You can be successful. Exactly. And uh, Tracy, exactly. Uh, I know your hobby, we caught you after your walk. You were exercising, and I appreciate you taking the time to to do this show early, early in California. Well, thank you, Lee, for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to um, the rest of the season for LSU. And like we talked earlier, I think LSU can run the table in the rest of the games and play Georgia. And I think certainly they have an opportunity to beat Georgia and end up in the college playoffs. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. And I got to give a plug to your granddaughter who's interning with my company, Joy Dartez. You want to give a plug out to her, your granddaughter at LSU? Yeah, she's a freshman. And actually, it's all the credit goes to her. She has aspirations to go into sports journalism and and she reached out to you on her own and yeah. I think the two of you connected and I think you inquired about well wait how, how are you you know why did you come to LSU and, right. and through that conversation she told you about me so yeah. um so yeah um hats off to Joy Dortes for reaching out and, and doing an internship in her freshman freshman year so that's uh, that's great we have to give Joy that that plug got to do that so <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you for allowing her the opportunity to do so. Tracy, thank you very much. Don't hang up. Uh, I want to tell everybody go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com. We do a preview magazine every year, 130 pages on all the colleges, all the high schools. We do a North and South magazine. You can still get a copy for this year. We're going to uh, get Tracy one. Um, and uh, also, uh, go check us out on YouTube. Uh, Subscribe. It's free. We're, we're getting a lot of subscriptions every month to our YouTube page. Or go to wherever you get your podcast or Twitter. We're also on Twitter. Anywhere you can you can do that. Uh, go online and you can just put in the Sports Scouting Report. We'll talk to everybody next month. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.